Today, I'm going to show you how to set up this Orbi mesh system from Netgear. A quick overview, this thing is super fast and has plenty of options. One of the options I really like is the ability to turn off devices. Meaning, if your kids don't go to bed at 9 p.m., then go ahead and flip the switch to off so disable them from getting online. Very nice. Honestly, we're not going to go over all of the features because I installed this for clients. So I didn't even get a chance to make a video out of it. I could only take some photos and then left once I was done. The setup was not as smooth as uh, setting up the Eero in my other videos, but this one does work as advertised being a mesh network with Ethernet backhaul. To configure the Orbi mesh router, you have to download this app first. It's called Orbi and then click on open once it's installed. Checkbox, I agree. And then click on I agree. Allow location. Allow only using the app, sure. Click on create a new account if you don't have an account or click on sign in to existing accounts. When you're signing up for the account, be sure to put in the correct email address because they will send you a link to verify your email is legit or not. I already created an account, so I'm just going to click on sign in. Once your account is all set up, go ahead and click on new system setup. Click on get started. Enable camera and scan. It wants to take a photo, so go ahead and allow it. There we go. Scan the code at the bottom of the router. Remember, this is the router and not the satellite. Now go ahead and find your modem. Take out the power supply to power it all down. Click on continue. FYI, the client has the ONT from Verizon as well as the Verizon box, the white Verizon box. So we're going to unplug the power supply from the ONT, which is usually the black box that the fiber cable comes into it. While we're at it, you might as well disconnect the power going into the white Verizon router as well, because we don't need it after this setup is done. Click on continue. Now go ahead and plug the power back into your modem again, or in this case, the ONC, the black box. Click on continue. Power up your new Orbi device. Also, go ahead and plug the Cat5 from your modem into the Orbi. From the black box, the ONC from Horizon, there's only one Cat5 cable coming out of it. So take that wire and plug it into the Orbi. There's five connections on the Orbi. Plug it into the one that's labeled yellow, or it's all the way on the left-hand side, as seen in this photo. Click on Continue. When you power up the Orbi for the first time, it takes a while. But once it's solid white, that means it's good and ready to go. So once it's solid white, go ahead and click on LED, it's solid white. While you're waiting for it to be solid white, here's a picture of the ONT. You can see this is the uh, power cable. In the back of the unit, here's the fiber that's going in. Here's the Cat5 cable that I'm talking about. This cable right here, you'll be plugging it in to the Orbi router. This is the white box from Verizon. This was the Wi-Fi router, but you won't be needing this once the Orbi is all set up and done. Previously, the white cable on the ONC was plugged into this red socket right here. So unplug that from this red socket right here and plug that into the yellow of the Orbi. Once the Orbi router is all finished, and set up, you can unplug all these other connections right here if you have them plugged in from your other devices, for instance. Feel free to plug these devices if you have into the Orbi, into any of the port, except the yellow port, of course, because the yellow port is reserved for the ONC. Now it's going to join the Orbi network. Click on continue. It's going to give you a password for your new Wi Fi, so go ahead and click on copy password. The new network name is assigned as Orbi46. Yours can be different. And now we're going to connect to it. So click on Orbi 46. Yours might be different and go ahead and paste in the password and then click on connect. We're now connected. You can personalize some of the settings by clicking on next. Here you can change the Wi-Fi name as well as the password. I'm going to skip that for now by clicking next. Go ahead and enter the password for the admin account to configure your router. This one should not be the same as your Wi-Fi password, by the way. 
because this will give you a lot of control over the Orbi router. So give it a new password and then click on next. Go ahead and set up your security questions just in case you forget the router admin password and then click on next when you're done. I don't know why it kicked me off the network, so I'm just going to click on join. Now it's going to try to connect back to the Orbi Wi-Fi access point. If there's a firmware update, go ahead and click on update. You really don't have a choice to skip this, by the way. Now, for whatever reason, after rebooting, it refuses to let any of my devices back onto the Orbi Wi-Fi network. I had to use my personal laptop, open a browser up, since I'm on Verizon, the default IP address for the router is 192.168.1.1. Once I go to that IP address, I was able to continue configuring the Orbi network, allowing my devices to get back online. It's so weird, it's so frustrating. I thought I had to call Verizon up to ask them to reset the ONC, but they said no, that's not needed at all. And they also verified this on their side, saying that they are able to see the Netgear router no problem. I can't show you what I did at 192.168.1.1 because even I don't know what I did to get it working. Maybe it was a fluke and I forgot to record the whole thing. Alright, once my laptop was able to get online after plugging directly into Orbi and sort out that internet mess, then my phone was able to get online as seen here. And to verify that, we're going to go to fast.com and measure the internet speed. I'm sitting like two feet away from the router connected via Wi-Fi and the speed is pretty good. Meanwhile, on my Surface laptop, I'm getting one gigabit per second. That's crazy fast over Wi-Fi. I don't know why there's such a huge difference. Maybe because I'm on an old phone or maybe I'm connected over uh, 2.4 gigahertz, which is not as fast as the 5 gigahertz channel that's also available in this Orbi. So who knows, maybe the laptop is on 5 gigahertz while the phone was on 2.4 gigahertz. If you click on device manager, you can see all of the devices that's connected to the router right now. Right now we're on an Android app, so it might be a little different on your iOS device, for instance. With Android, you can clearly see there's a tick mark right here. If for whatever reason you want to kick the device off, you can always tap on it and then it will go into the off position, disabling it from ever getting onto the internet. Very slick. Right now, there's only three devices. There's the Real Link NVR, the client's iPhone, and my own work phone right here. Somehow, it's smart enough to know that you cannot kick yourself offline. Very smart. Now, if you're on iOS and you want to kick the device off, you have to tap on the device. Once you tap on the device, there will be a uh, pause button somewhere up here. If you want to kick the device off, go ahead and tap on the pause icon. That will pause the device from ever getting online. If you want to resume access to the internet, go ahead and click on the play icon, and then that will resume or allow your device to get back online. Let's click on the menu icon and add the satellites. Click on next. This takes a very, very long time for it to detect the satellite on your network. Myself, I'm running a CAT6 cable from the router to the satellite in another room for the client. Running the CAT6 cable to the second floor to the satellite is the only way to make sure that the satellite will provide full Wi-Fi speed for everyone on the second floor. And here is another issue that came up while setting this up for the client. For whatever reason, it refuses to detect the satellites. And then it's only like about one hour later that I find out that the Orbi automatically added the satellite in. That's why I could never find the satellite because the satellite was already automatically added by the main router. That's weird. If yours does not automatically add the satellite in, go ahead and click on the sync button, which is on the back side of this Orbi unit and then click on next. Here's a close-up of that sync button in the back side of the unit. The satellite is clearly labeled as satellite, so there's no way you can confuse the satellite with the main router. The really nice thing about the satellite is that there are four ports. One of the cable is already taken because this one's going back to the main router. So there's three available ports that you can plug in your other devices on the second floor, at least for this client anyway. 
It's going to try its best to detect the satellite, and this process takes a very long time. I know the app says two minutes, but for me, it felt like an eternity because I kept doing it again and again and again, and it refuses to find a satellite because the satellite was already automatically added in. Hopefully, you don't have any funky issues like I did. This is my first experience setting up the Orbi from Netgear, and I didn't like it at all. I wasted like two hours trying to set this whole thing up. With setting up the Eero, it was perfectly flawless, and I was up and running in within 30 minutes. Alright, hopefully this video helps you on how to set up your own Orbi router and a satellite. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.